Those will start in about 30 seconds. Dr. Lewis. Good afternoon. I want to ask us all to please uh, turn our cell phones to silent and make sure they are off the table so we can avoid feedback noise. You may notice committee members accessing their laptops during the meeting. They are using the laptop solely to access the committee meetings materials that are in electronic format. We have designated time on the agenda for public comment and ask for public comment on each agenda item. I ask that you be respectful of the need to conduct the committee's business. Should anyone disrupt the meeting, I will ask that person to conduct himself or herself in such a manner that permits the committee to transact its business. This meeting is, will be available via teleconference. Individuals listening to the meeting will have an opportunity to provide public comment and will be assisted by a moderator who will be facilitating the teleconferencing process. For those members of the public participating via teleconference, please wait until the monitor, moderator has introduced you before you make your comments. To request to make a comment during the public comment period, press star 1. You will hear a tone indicating that you are in the queue for comment. If you change your mind and do not wish to make a comment, press the pound sign. Assistance is available throughout the teleconferencing process and meeting. To request a specialist, press star zero. Each person will be limited to three minutes per agenda item. However, during agenda item two, public comments on items not on the agenda, the committee has limited public comment, the public comment period for individuals on the teleconference to 20 minutes. In addition, Public comment from individuals here at the meeting will also be limited to 20 minutes. Thereafter, after 20 minutes, no further comments will be accepted. During, pub during public comment on any other agenda item, 10 minutes will be allowed for comments from individuals on the teleconference line and from those in the audience. After 10 minutes, no further comments will be accepted. Business services staff will be assisting me with receiving the public comments via teleconference during this meeting. The committee welcomes public comment on any item on the agenda, and it is the committee's intent to ask for public comment prior to the board taking action on any agenda item. If for some reason I forget to ask for public comment on an agenda item and you wish to speak on that item, please raise your hand and you will be recognized. I would like to remind all speakers to complete a presenter slip so I can call you by name at the appropriate time and that the record of this meeting can be complete. Please give the speaker's slips to Ms. Lisa Toof to my left. Ms. Toof, thank you for identifying yourself. I will do my best to call upon everyone who has supplied a slip for the agenda item and recognize those who wish to make last minute comments but we ask you to fill out a speaker's slip so we can have uh, your uh, name for the record. I want to remind all speakers to please stay on topic and keep your comments to three minutes or less. I would like to call this meeting to order and ask Ms. Toof to please call the roll. Dr. Bishop? Here. Dr. Gonadev? Here. Dr. Levine? Here. Dr. Lewis? Present. Ms. Pines? Here. Ms. Yaroslavsky? Present. Mr. Serrano Sewell? Present. Thank you. Uh, seems as though we have a quorum. Thank you, members, for being here. Moving on to agenda item two public comments on items not on the agenda. I have no speaker slips. Are there any comments from the phone? And if you have any questions on the phone, please press star one at this time. One moment, we do have a question coming up. As 
from Carolyn Navarro. Please go ahead, ma'am. Your line is open. Okay. Can they hear me? Yes, they can. Okay. My name is Carolyn Navarro. My phone number is 626-919-0972. I've made actionable complaints regarding my daughter, who's autistic, the treatment of my daughter, um, who had a deadly brain, brain clot. And I'm sorry, Miss Navarro. Miss Navarro, we can't have you talk about a, a complaint that may be actively before the board. Okay, but my complaint is I'm not getting help from the board, and I've been complaining for the past year. You've ignored my you, phone calls. You can you can speak in in uh, general terms, but. Um, so it's not really my public comment. I'm being told what to say. Is that what you're telling me? No. My daughter was treated horribly by doctors at a hospital denying she had a deadly brain clot. You, she almost died. Ms. Navarro, you can, you can speak in general terms, and, and we can, can also in have... general terms that are your terms. Is that what you're telling me? No, I'm telling you it's, it's not appropriate for you to talk about an active... And situation. I'm stating that I haven't gotten help from the medical board when doctors treated my daughter horribly. I have the right to say that. Uh, ma'am, ma'am, hi. This is David uh, Serrano Sewell, president of the medical board and okay, chair of the. I can barely hear you, sir. I'm doing the best I can to hear you. Okay. This is David Serrano Sewell, president of the board and chair of the executive committee. Yes. We're, we're prohibited by state law from hearing active cases because it would prejudice then us. Then why don't you return your phone calls then? Okay, ma'am. I've been trying to contact you for over a year, trying to get help with my daughter being treated horribly by doctors. I understand. And my daughter almost died. I understand. So if, Ms. Navarro, if it's okay, I've asked staff to no. give you a call. My daughter's name is Vanessa Maria Navarro. You know who she is. Okay. Thank you. My daughter could have died because of what these doctors did to her, and I'm not backing off. I'm, I'm I, putting YouTube videos up about what happened to my daughter. Okay. And this is why I'm calling you today, because you people are not listening to me. You closed my complaint without telling me. You closed my complaint Ms. Navarro, without telling me. we're going to have staff address this. Yeah, you want to call me and address this. Because okay, thank you. Sorry. We'll now move on to agenda item three. Approval of the minutes from the uh, committee meeting. I move to approve the minutes of the meeting. Ma'am, ma'am, can you please give me your phone number? There's been a motion to approve the October 23rd. There's been a second, Ms. Yaroslavsky. Is there any public comment please. on the approval of the minutes? Seeing no public comments, I don't know. Can we take comments from the phone? I'll ask. Do we have any public comments from the phone on the approval of the minutes? No, 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 no. Excuse me. I have to open the line. All right. Seeing no public comments. Ms. Toof, can you please call the roll? Hold on a second. I think we need to let them get her number oh, and then. Okay. All right. Thank you. We'll take a minute here. Who's doing the fiscal? Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Thank you. Thank you. We're on agenda item three. There's been a motion and a second to approve the minutes of October 23rd. There is no public comment from those present. Are there any comments from those on the phone on agenda item three? There are no comments from the telephone. Thank you. Um, Ms. Toof, can you please call the roll? Dr. Bishop? Dr. Ganadev? Aye. Dr. Levine? Aye. Dr. Lewis? Aye. Ms. Pines? Aye. Ms. Yaroslavsky? Aye. Mr. Serrano Sewell? Aye. The minutes are approved. I am now moving to agenda item four presentation and update for fiscal year 2015 16 budget. Ms. Kirkmeyer. Ms. Amaral. Hello. Good afternoon.
Good afternoon. Um, we are going to go over the budget documents. There's quite a few in the board meeting packet, uh, approximately 15 pages under tab four. Um, the first two pages, exec 4-1 and 4-2, are the fund conditions for the medical board. 4-1 uh, is with the loan repayment. Current year revenues were projected to be approximately 52.3 million, of which 45.7 was for renewals. Our expenditure authority for 1415 was 60.4 million, which includes approved ongoing costs for breeze. The out years reflect anticipated future costs, such as potential staffing augmentations to meet the operational needs of the board and continued costs related to breeze. The board is anticipating a four month reserve in fiscal year 1516 with the repayment of the general fund loan. The fund condition without loan repayment, exec 4 2, reflects the fund condition, um, the reserve being fully exhausted by fiscal year 16 17. Exec 4 3 through 4 10 are the budget expenditure reports. 4-3 is the expenditures for the board through May 2015, and the board has expended approximately 89% of the total budget and is anticipating a slight surplus at the end of the fiscal year, which can be attributed largely to personal services. The reports by unit, Exec 4-4, 4-5, 4-7 through 10, um, reflect the total expenditures by unit within the board as of May 31st, 2015. The board's total budget for 1415 was 60.4 million. However, the distribution for personal services funding by unit was slightly out of alignment for fiscal year 1415. Board staff will be working closely with the Department of Consumer Affairs budget office to build the 1516 budget allotments and ensure they're in line with our spending. Um, if I could direct your attention to Exec 4-6, that is the budget expenditure report for HQIU, and they have expended approximately 92% of their budget as of May 2015, and we are projecting that they will fully expend their budget for the fiscal year. On page exec 4-11, it is a budget overview by component, and that is just a high-level summary of our spending by each of the, the units for the last four fiscal years. It also displays the total authorized positions for each program area. Exec 4-12 is external agency spending, and this chart displays five fiscal years of expenditures for departmental and statewide pro rata, as well as expenditures related to the Office of Administrative Hearings and the Attorney General's Office. The data is through May 2015, and we're projecting to fully expend the budget for OAH and the AG's office. Exec 4-13 is the board per diem and travel, and the total per diem budgeted is $31,500, and as of May 2015, the board has expended $85,800, resulting in a deficit for this line. <coughs> item. Exec 4-14 and 4-15 are the Song Brown and Stephen Thompson charts, and they contain five fiscal years of information on uh, collections for the Song Brown Physician Training Program and Stephen N. Thompson Loan Repayment Program. As of May 2015, the board has collected and transferred 165.6 thousand and 1.62 million respectively for these programs. And that concludes the presentation. Thank you. Ms. Kirkmeyer, do you have anything to add? Yes, we have any questions. Ms. Yaroslawski? So thank you for the report. Um, in looking at all of the numbers, what I wanted to know was, there is there an impact that you feel or a, a higher expenditure or a lower expenditure based on what's going on with Breeze as well as Cures? I saw data pr processing up 700%. Uh, you know, I'm concerned that 
we're spending a lot. We're spending money, and we've not seen the programs in place. So. Um, So in regards to both Breeze and Cures, those are both items that we have been funded for for the next two fiscal years. Um, Breeze, we got a augmentation to our budget last year, I believe, yeah, 13, thir in 13, 14, and then also in this year for 14, 15. On an ongoing basis, the money that will be going to the CARES program is actually out of the fees. physicians' fees right. that are being charged to them. So there won't be any impact to our budget on CARES after this year. On Breeze, however, as you know, there was an ongoing, when the contract was signed, once we went live, there was going to be an amount that we had to pay for five years, and that has been moved to seven now with Breeze. Um, and I believe um, I had sent out an email talking about that um, some time ago when the, when the spring finance letter went through and, and the um, Section 11, I believe it was, when that was passed. And so, uh, the, yes, it impacts our budget because we have to pay for the system that was put together. And we Does will finish? Does it have a negative impact yes, on our that's, budget? Yeah. No, no, no more that, so than any other augmentation. I mean, as we go continue down the path, as you can see here, our budget continues to go down. Um, we usually revert money, so at this point I'm not projecting that this will be an impact within probably the next four years to where we would have to increase fees or do anything like that because of it. So also on the loan repayment from the governor's money, that is a definite that's coming in? We're seeing the money and... Yes, so all of the, the we usually don't bring this slide to you except unless we're doing a specific budget item. Um, and so we wanted to show you this is the money that actually was collected at the board and transferred to those two programs. Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, uh, two items I have uh, on budget. One of them is uh, the Office of the uh, 4-12, I think, Office of the Administrative Hearings. Uh, we didn't spend the money because we didn't have enough cases for go which went there. Is that what it is? Yeah, so if you see the actual versus what we have budgeted there, the big difference, that's exactly what it is. Because we're able to settle so many cases, we don't spend our full allotment for the Office of Administrative Hearing. That's not unusual for us probably for the last several years. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and the second one is uh, the uh, budget assignment for the board expenses looks like minuscule, and that's why you have such a difference there. So how are you going to uh, adjust that next time? So on this line item, we would actually have to do, I believe, unless Liz can correct me, a BCP in order to do an adjustment to put additional money into the member's um, salary or per diem. But at the, at the end of the day, for our board, it doesn't matter what's in it, each individual line item, as long as when we close our budget at the end of the year, we're um, in the positive. So it doesn't matter that we've overexpended one line item, as long as we're underexpending in others, which we have done, for, as you all know, for the past several years. Yeah, I, my point was that make sure that it just any time you spend so much about the budget, it just doesn't look right. So adjust the budgets, because I know you have a larger number of board members because of a lot of appointments recently. So adjust the number so that it just doesn't look that, hey, what are the board members doing here? Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there any additional comments from the members or questions? Seeing none, are there any comments from those present? Audience, excuse me. Seeing none, are there any comments from those on the phone? No comment from the telephone. Thank you. I'm now moving to agenda item five, presentation on the satisfaction survey. Ms. Robinson and Ms. Kirkmeyer. And I did just want to state all of the items on our executive committee agenda today. These are items that either a member has requested or that's in response to our um, strategic plan talking about when we need to update the board. So that's what this update is as well as the strategic plan update. So I wanted to let the members know why these were on the agenda. Good afternoon, Chair and members. Please turn to pages exec 5-1 through 5-9 for the staff report and, results, and survey results from the board's ongoing consumer satisfaction surveys. 
These surveys are part of the board's strategic plan in an effort to improve consumer services provided by the board. The board is currently conducting three surveys using the web-based system SurveyMonkey. The charts shown uh, show the results during the prior three fiscal years for the applicant survey, the newsletter survey, and the website user survey. In attachment one on pages exec 5-4 and 5-5, the results are for the applicant survey. This survey web link is sent to all newly licensed physicians via email. The first question asks if the application instructions clearly state how to complete the application. The licensing program has continued to receive high marks for this measurement, as much as 94% of applicants answering yes. Question two asks if you visited the board's website for assistance, was the information helpful? This question has also consistently received very high ratings. In September 2014, the instructional video for completing the U.S. Canadian Medical School graduate application was added to the board's website, giving enhanced directions in completing the application. For question three, it asks, if you use the Breeze online system, how satisfied were you with the information it provided? On average, 68% of the applicants reported they were either very satisfied or somewhat satisfied with the system. Question four asks the, applicant, asks the applicant, how satisfied were you with the courteousness, helpfulness, and responsiveness of the staff person who processed your application? And question five asks, how satisfied were you with the application process? For both questions, on average, 70% of applicants reported they were either very satisfied or somewhat satisfied. In attachment two, exec 5-6 and 5-7 contain the results for the newsletter survey. This survey web link is included in each newsletter. The first question asks the reader to rate the overall satisfaction with the content of the newsletter. In fiscal year 14-15, an average of 75% of the readers reported the content as excellent, very good, or good. For question two, it asks the reader to rate the usefulness of the annual report. This question received very high ratings. Of the 11 quarters reported, four quarters received ratings of 100% for very useful, informative, or somewhat informative. Question three asks, what method would you, would you prefer to receive the newsletter? On average, 69% of the readers prefer to receive the newsletter via email, 28 preferred hard copy via regular mail, and 3% preferred social media delivery. Question four shows respondents, uh, respondents to the survey were interested in the newsletter as a physician and surgeon. The last attachment three in exec 5-8 and 5-9, the results are for the website survey. This website survey link is available on the board's homepage. The first question asks, which of the following best describes you? In fiscal year 1314, the website users consisted of about 57% licensee, current licensees, 15% were consumers or patients, and 17% were categorized as other. In fiscal year 1415, there are about 33% were current licensees, 30 30% were current patients or were consumers or patients, and 20% were categorized as other. For question two, it asks, during your most recent visit to the board's website, which of the following best describes the information you were seeking? The majority of our website users were seeking information on either license renewal, verifying a license, or filing a complaint. For question three, it asks, were you, were you successful in finding the information you were seeking? And question four asks, how satisfied were you with the board's website? During fiscal year 12-13, quarter four, and fiscal year 13-14, quarter one, prior to the implementation of the Breeze system, on average, 85% of the web 
website users reported they were able to find the information they were seeking. After Breeze, most website users reported they were unable to find the information they were seeking and reported dissatisfaction with the board's website. Some commented that the board's website was confusing and cumbersome. Others stated the renewal processing and verifying a license was not user friendly. That concludes my report on the board's consumer satisfaction surveys. Are there any questions? Uh, yes. I'll start with my left, Ms. Yaroslavsky, Dr. Levine, and then Dr. Lewis. I want to thank you for the information. Uh, I think it's very informative. I think, though, that um, information of 68% happy <clears throat> is slanting the signing it one way versus the 32 percent that weren't happy. So I'm wondering as an ongoing opportunity if there's a possibility in the future of when people sign on to the website, if there would be a pop-up and said at the, at the end of your sign up would you be willing to take a two minute survey? And at that point the question was asked, were your needs met, were they not met, were you satisfied, were you not satisfied, was the information easy to access, not. So it's a little bit more generic. Um, I have to tell you that I've tried to use the website. Nobody's ever asked me about my use of the website. And I assume that I should know what I'm doing. And I have had problems as well. So um, I want to thank you for this, bring it to our attention. But on the same, I, it shouldn't be finished. Yeah, so I have, I have a few comments. Um, and I think I understand, I think this is a very well intended effort. But 113 responses and 142 responses are too small to draw any conclusions. Exactly. And so, and I think the language in the report confuses users with responders to the survey. So it isn't that 80% of users um, said X, it's 80% of the small number of people who responded. And that's, a, it, it, it ends up, over-representing the, the value of information in, the, in terms of the results you get. Um, I, would, I also um, think that it would be very val valuable uh, to add a free text box to the survey. Um, you know, in general, you get much richer information if people can add a comment or two. They do? They do. Do you have, do you get comments? We do get comments. So providing us with the comments would add, you know, substantial richness to this. The other comment is there's a big difference between very satisfied and somewhat satisfied. And so reporting that as a mixed number, again, can be misleading because if it's 5% very and 75% somewhat, that's very different than the reverse, and so I would suggest breaking those two out when you get enough numbers to do that. Um, and I think um, I, I think that's it. I, and I think you might, in the future, save yourself a lot of time not trying to overanalyze a small number of responses that really they're not actionable because they are so small. I actually think that um, Ms. Yaroslavsky's suggestion of adding a pop-up box, if we can work with our IT unit to actually have that happen. Um, the applicant survey, unfortunately, how we get that to them is through the letter when they get their license and we ask them to go online. So um, I'm not sure how we can encourage that one, but maybe we can think of some ways to get a better output. Um, and then the newsletter, of course, that goes out. But maybe we can put in the email please be willing to take a survey on the newsletter to help us better inform you. So we'll find ways to get a better response from these. It's a very stellar job that you've done. And yes, um, those small numbers, it's, um, you can't make anything from any, any of this data at all. And are you asking all these questions at one time? These are, well, they're all three separate um, surveys. So each one has five. Who gets the individual survey? Would I get three different surveys of 
It depends question. on the user, what they're going in. And so um, the applicant, the attachment one, is that what it is? Attachment one is the applicant survey. So it, when an applicant gets his letter saying, you now have your license, this is the survey mm. that they would get, th just those five. So the next one, attachment two, which is the newsletter satisfaction, there is a comment on the newsletter where you can, because it's electronic, you can just automatically click there. And those five questions goes to whoever wants to t click on that and take the survey. And then the last five, there's a, a link on our website that says, please take our survey. And so it's on that, those five would be for that user. So at the end of the applicant process, um, there are some websites that won't let you close out the process unless you finish a few of the questions. Uh, have you tried that just to get some more response? Because these numbers are well, so for the so application, small. that's a little bit different because the applicant, first of all, I, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head of how many individuals actually even go in and apply on Breeze. So that's the only applicants that we can hit. Um, I'm not sure if Mr. Warden's in here, if he knows how many we get, applicants we get on that website. But that's, what we want is them to do their overall process, which happens not on the website. It doesn't happen until the very end when their license is issued. See, most, in, most important for, for me, and when we hear about people being confused about the process, is that application. If we know that our application process is is almost perfect and people are not confused, I'm okay, but if there's a little bit of confusion, you don't know which one, answer yes or no, I want to know that. That's the, the group that I really want to capture somehow, if I had a choice. Yeah, see, and so many of them are paper. That's part of the problem right now. Maybe as we get a larger pool, what we could do is put, we could do two separate surveys for our applicants, actually. We could do a survey um, that goes on their breeze once they go through the breeze application process. Then they could fill that out, and then um, one at the end of the process for their whole licensure process. So we could do that. That's a Thank um, you. option. Thank you. Jeff? Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank, thanks for the information. Uh, I'm looking at the applicants and their satisfaction. If you follow Disney, Disney takes only level five or the well satisfied as the only answer. Everything else below is unsatisfied. So that's, that's the way they look at customer satisfaction. Well, that's your top level. If I look at since Breeze came on, it looks even worse. Uh, that's why I'm just, just uh, worries me. 31%, 44%, there are some, some of these numbers are, uh, that's very satisfied is, uh, is somewhat concerning. So I just want to point out. And I can tell you why. Because remember when we went to Breeze, we got rid of our ability for our applicants to be able to go on and check the status of their application. Mm -hmm. That just started in the last release that came out um, from it's, it's not as good as our system was prior to it, but it, at least it's going to tell them what documents are missing and if they're pending. So we're hoping that that started in, what month, man, June? Must it, it released on June 30th, actually. And so now they'll be able to look at the status, but even that's going to be as we get those ones onto the system. And that is exactly, Dr. Ganadev, what from our guess, anyway, as much as we can speculate, that's why that happened when the applicants were no longer able to go on and look at the status of their application. And we're working on that. Uh, quickly. But to go back to what Dr. Ganadev is suggesting, if someone is not able to sign on and get information from Breeze, they're not going to be happy. There's, there's money for data, whatever, in the budget that's increased. Maybe there's got to be some way of collaboration so for the issues where Breeze is not functioning, that some other temporary bridge system is in place, and we can capture those. I'm not sure where it's going to go, uh, Mr. Serrano, so, but mm. I, I would admonish staff to, to try and figure out some creative opportunities to, because 30% of zero is still zero, and we're assuming that this is great, but it's, there's not enough data there. And I do want to let you know that the money for Breeze goes specifically for what's currently there in Breeze. That is not for anything 
um, oh, right. So we was there a time that the, that the money was going to finish from Breeze, that we were going to have a system that worked and everyone was going to be working on it and happy? Yeah, and, and like I said, we still have, it's in my update, but I'm going ahead. Sorry. Um, we no, that's okay. We still have several outstanding issues in the system that we're working to fix. So once that is all completed and we have the system that we intended to have, um, I think our satisfaction rates should go up. Thank you for the presentation, the both of you. Are there any comments from uh, the public? Those present in the audience, are there any comments on the presentation uh, from the phone? No comment from the telephone. Thank you. I am now moving to agenda item six, discussion and update on the strategic plan. Hello. Hi again. Please turn to pages 6-1 through 6-19 for the board's strategic plan update. I'm not going to go over each activity, but rather provide a brief update unless members have specific questions on any of the listed activities. You may recall from the previous update on the, board, on the plan, the added color coding and the status column used to show the board's progress for each activity. If an activity is highlighted in green, it has been completed. If an activity is highlighted in yellow, it is either in progress or ongoing. And if an activity is highlighted in red, it has not been completed in the time frame requested. The status column indicates the most recent action taken on that activity. About 75% of the plan has either been completed or is in progress or ongoing. Some incomplete activities are due to the board's ability to run enforcement reports due to the transition to the breeze system. Board staff continue to work to resolve these issues. Other pending activities are due to a lack of staff resources to work on some of the more specific special projects. With the hiring of the deputy director and the recent hiring of the new chief of enforcement, the new staff will begin working on some of those activities that have been put on hold. Some of the more recent activities that have been completed include the following. The board has begun working on goal 1.1 with regard to the re-entry into medical practice after extended absences. On page exec 6-1 for goal 1.1D, on June 30th, the board held an interested parties meeting on the issue of re-entry in Sacramento. And Kurt, the chief of licensing, is in the process of holding another meeting in the Southern California area. For goal 1.2, the maintenance of licensure and maintenance of certification, this has been put on hold until the issues surrounding certification is resolved. For goal 2.2F, which is found on pages exec 6-4, the board is holding a regulatory hearing tomorrow on the outpatient surgery setting accreditation agency standards. On May 20th, both the board's uh, prescription drug awareness videos won awards as noted on goal 3.4C on page exec 6-11. The public service announcement featuring Natalie Coughlin won the State Information Officer Council Gold Award for Excellence. And the video for physicians featuring Dr. Bishop won the Silver Award. On page exec 6-13, for goal 4.2A, the board held 17 events from January to June, either licensing fairs or orientations. And on the last page, exec 6-19 for goal 6.1A, Ashby Wolf from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services will present an update on the Affordable Care Act today in the enforcement, in the uh, education committee meeting. That concludes my strategic plan update. Are there any questions? Thank you, Ms. Robinson. Are there any questions or comments from members of the board? Looking to my left, my right, seeing, yes, doctor. Yeah, I, I can see that uh, majority of the red is either from uh, Breeze or from lack of personnel which we are hiring, so we understand. Thank you. Are there any comments uh, from members of the public present in the audience? on the report, seeing none. Are there any comments on the telephone? No comments from the telephone. All right, thank you. Thank you for that update. 
I'm now moving on to agenda item seven. Uh, future agenda items. Do any members have any agenda items for the next executive committee meeting? Colleagues, is there anything that's of note or interest that you'd like to see discussed at the executive committee? Should we be looking forward to um, Ms. Kirkmeyer? Breeze, as far as a report or some kind of a better understanding of what the constraints are and what the visual is for the next five years, or is that something that we just go with the flow and? We're going to have a presentation on Breeze. Yeah, I have. Well, I have a, no, that's Kier's, sorry. Oh, Kier's, sorry. Yeah. Um, in, in regards to Breeze, um, the, the system right now that we have with Breeze is a system that we're going to have. We are continuing to make significant improvements to that system via every time that we get something that isn't working right, we're putting that in as a request for a change. Um, so my concern is, is that every time there's a change order in a situation, there's a new expenditure, there's new expense, there's new staffing, there's new um, education, there's new training system. And I understand what we have is what we have and we have to work with it. But it's not meeting the function and the needs of this board and your staff. So I understand that you're working within certain constraints. So all I'm asking is, would it be beneficial to bring out and air what we're looking at for the next three to five years, what the costs are going to be, what the weaknesses are, and are there solutions or are there no solutions? I can't say that it's not meeting the requirements and the, the necessities of staff. I, I would not sit here and say that. Okay. Um, our complaint process, we've gotten that down. We do think it takes longer, and right. that's something I'm very willing to say. Um, because of the timing of the system, because it's not a mainframe system, it does take longer to enter information into the system and to look up information. But as far as the way the system functions, it gathers all the information. Um, we, we have reports that we're working on right now. That's our biggest issue right now is that we need reports out of the enforcement process and we're working on those and that's a given I would completely agree. But as far as meeting the functions and the requirements of what we need to do our business and the enforcement side, I would say that it does what, it, what we need and, and um, you know, it's not CAS, it's not our old system, but it's the system that we have with improvements. There's several things that I, th I would say are better than they were in the CAS system. So I think on our enforcement side, barring the fact that we don't have reports that we're working on, I would say it meets the, our needs in order to do business. Could it be improved? Absolutely. Can any system be improved? Yes. And we will continue to find those improvements. And if they come in and it's just a system problem where we don't have to go out and do a lot of programming, that is not additional costs because it's in the maintenance hours that we're already paying for. Okay. So that's a good thing. On the licensing side, again, we have some things that are outstanding that we need to get improvement on on that side. We're working on that. Um, we're getting reports out of licensing now. We're checking the validity of those reports or the accuracy of those reports, but we are getting reports a lot better out of it, licensing than we are enforcement. So it's meeting our needs there. It's getting individuals licensed, Thank but you. again, I would say it's taking a long time. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kirkmeyer. I, I, I think that's a way of saying we'll give ser serious thought to putting it on as an agenda item, but it remains a part of Ms. Kirkmeyer's executive report at the meetings. Dr. Levine? Yeah, I'm sorry to, no. sorry to go out of order, but I'd like to go back to page exec 612, and this is the in the strategic plan. It's goal three, um, consumer and license education, licensee education, license, licensee education. And my concern with this all green column is that it's really it's an activity report without detail. And, and I think um, we need to, I think it would be helpful for the board, number one, if we had prioritized who the important groups were and targeted those groups. This, it feels like this is much more reactive and responsive to requests. And I think there are some audiences that, um, whether they think to call and ask for information, that there ought to be more aggressive outreach. And it would, I, it would be helpful to me as a board member to understand what, the, what, what priorities have been set and how we're 
doing in reaching those audiences versus um, just, you know, whoever calls, we get somebody out there. Um, the, um, and, and, and also some effort to see whether it is appropriate to involve board members in doing this outreach, whether, you know, Mr. Serrano Sewell should be um, making a presentation to the, to the California Bar Association on the Medical Board of California. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I know Dr. Lewis did um, a tr uh, presentation with Ms. Sweet um, at the end of last year, so right. yeah. But, but matching priority audiences, and, and it's not my job to set the priorities, but I do think um, the, it would be helpful for the board to understand how staff is thinking about the high priority audiences. And that, that was gonna be one of my suggestions for the, um, um, the future agenda item for our next executive committee meeting. And I was thinking in like larger terms, but this is a really good concrete example of what we should discuss around public outreach, Dry educating the public to go to our website, what we need to do around that, thinking about our PSAs for the, for the next year mm -hmm. so we can get the gold, you know, and um, doing the outreach stuff. So you and I can, we, we can work on fashioning a, an agenda item that speaks to all this, but that should be a focus of our discussion at our next executive committee meeting. Are there any other suggestions or comments? Uh, seeing none, we'll move to item. Oh, pardon me, move to item. Oh, are there any comments uh, on the report from the public? This is future agenda items for the executive committee. Are there any comments from those on the phone? No comments from the telephone. Thank you. The next agenda item is eight, adjournment. There being no further business of the meeting, it is adjourned without objection. Thank you, members.